In this video, we will go over the motion packet forms available at the link below. If you have any questions after watching this video, please contact your nearest self-help law center. A motion is the name of a document that you must file to ask a judge to make a ruling or to take some other action for you once you've already started your court case. A motion does not start a lawsuit. To begin the process of filing a motion, you must fill out the first three forms in this motion packet. A motion, a proposed order, and an affidavit. On the first page of each of these forms, you will find a caption. This caption should be identical on all of your forms. On the top left, please fill in your name, mailing address, phone number, and email. If you started the case, you are the petitioner. If you responded to the case, you are the respondent. And if you are filing jointly with someone else, you could either be the petitioner or co-petitioner. Next, fill in the information for the court in which you are filing your documents. Next, write in the name of the petitioner and respondent or co-petitioner on the appropriate lines below. Remember to always put the name of the petitioner on the first line and the respondent or co-petitioner on the second line. If there is no respondent or co-petitioner in your case, leave this line blank. Above the title of the document, write in your case or cause number. The motion is the form you will use to tell the judge what you want and why you should get it. Be sure to tell the judge all of the important facts and to make any argument that helps to support your request for a court order. You should tell the judge what law or laws your motion is based on. You can find Montana laws at courts.mt.gov. You will also tell the judge what other documents are attached to the motion and whether you want the court to hold a hearing on the motion. Your motion also includes a certificate of service on the bottom of the second page. This section is where you will certify to the court that you will send or have sent copies of all of your documents to the other party. The affidavit is a statement signed by you which must be filed at the same time as your motion. You are declaring under penalty of perjury that all information contained in your statement is true and correct. This statement is where you will tell the judge all of the important and relevant facts in support of your motion. An affidavit is a form of evidence that the court can consider when making decisions, just like giving testimony in court. Your affidavit must include only the facts that you know from personal experience. The proposed order is the document that you are asking the judge to sign. It tells anyone who reads it exactly what the judge has ordered in very simple, clear terms. It should be short and to the point. Basically, you act like the judge's secretary. You draft an order for the judge to sign so that the judge does not need to write one. However, the judge may not like the order that you have written and as a result, the judge may change your order or sign a different order altogether. Fill out and file the original motion, affidavit, and proposed order with the clerk of court. However, before filing the original documents, you will need to make copies for all of the parties, including yourself. Submit the originals to the clerk of court, along with stamped, self-addressed envelopes for all parties, including yourself. On the same day, you must mail or hand deliver copies of all of these filed documents to all other parties in your case, as you have indicated on your certificate of service on the second page of your motion. The proposed order and all copies of the proposed order, along with the self-addressed stamped envelopes, will be kept by the court. After that, you will simply wait. If you hand deliver the motion and affidavit to the opposing party, they will have 14 days to respond to your motion in their response to tell the judge their side of the story. If you mailed your motion and affidavit to the opposing party, they will have an extra three days, including Saturdays, Sundays, or holidays to respond, or in other words, 17 days. If the other party files a response to your motion, you have the option of filing the reply to response to motion form in this packet if you think it is necessary. This is your opportunity to respond to the opposing party's response to your motion. Your reply must be filed within 14 days if the response was hand-delivered to you or within 17 days if the response was mailed to you. A reply cannot raise new facts that were not previously discussed by one of the parties and you cannot file another affidavit in support of your motion. 
The reply should contain only your response to the arguments raised by the opposing party in their response and should not contain completely new arguments. You must serve a copy of the reply on the opposing party. A reply is not required. However, you must file the request for hearing form and another proposed order if the other party has not already done so. The request for contested hearing or request for uncontested hearing form in this packet is necessary to move your motion forward to be heard by the judge and to obtain a court order. As the party who filed the motion, it is your responsibility to file the request for hearing. If the other party does not file a response, the matter is uncontested. If the other party files a response, the matter is contested. A proposed order must also be submitted along with your request for contested or uncontested hearing. It must be submitted with self-addressed stamped envelopes to all parties in your case. A copy of the request for contested or uncontested hearing must be served on the opposing party. If the other party does not file a response, you will need to immediately file the request for uncontested hearing and the proposed order setting the hearing, along with self-addressed stamped envelopes for all parties. If you receive an order scheduling a contested or uncontested hearing, be certain to note the date and time on your calendar as the judge will expect you to appear and provide testimony. If you fail to appear on the date and time set for the hearing, the judge may dismiss your motion or enter an order in favor of the opposing party. You have now completed a motion packet. If you have any questions, please contact your nearest self-help law center or the State Law Library of Montana.